With the upcoming version live stream and the new patch, the one question that has been haunting all the AGSR players is that should they pull for Fei Xiao or go for Ling Sha? Also, there are others who are still concerned about whether they should pull for Jiao Shou now or skip him for either of these two new upcoming units. If you're one of those, then this video is just for you. Today we discuss both Fei Xiao and Ling Xiao's pull value for an early, mid and end game player and also discuss if they are more valuable than Jiao Shou. So like and sub if you enjoy this video and let's get started. Alright, now I did make a Fei Xiao video earlier comparing her to Akron and it kinda turned into a shit talk which I never meant it to be that way but Akron was just demolishing Fei Xiao in every category which is kinda understandable but this time we are not comparing her to anyone but depending on how you guys say this it might become another video of me shit talking on Fei Xiao. Anyways, before I talk about her pros and cons let me first give you a simple and short explanation of her kit. Fei Xiao is a win unit following the path of Hunt which is not in the best state right now and after that Basically, she is Akron, but single target and follow-up focused. She has a unique energy mechanic just like Akron, and instead of debuffs, she gains points when her team attacks the enemy, making follow-up attack units her best teammates, hence follow-up focused. She herself also has a follow-up attack in her kit, which does deal decent damage, but more so, it helps her generate ultimate stacks, and she needs 6 of those to fire off her ultimate, and can store up to 12, which means you can fire off 2 ultimates back to back, kinda like Yunli, and that's all there is to it. She's a straightforward single target damage dealer who loves follow-up attack units in a team and at least right now has the most potential in a dual DPS team with either any of these three units. Now before I dive deep into her issues and problems, let's first talk about her pros. And frankly, there aren't many. As a follow-up focus unit, she has high consistent single target damage, meaning she can be an excellent damage dealer for most like Apocalyptic Shadow and the MOC. She can also ignore weakness type, allowing her to be viable against any types of enemies. And lastly, she is kind of a low investment unit, as we already have an awesome Hunt like cone in the Herta shop. And for her sub DPS slot, we have a lot of F2B options like Hunt March 7th and the upcoming Mose. But this isn't completely true, as I'll discuss in this video. For her cons, well there are a lot. So let's take this step by step. First, before we even deal damage, we first need to build the unit. And here, Fei is extremely stat hungry. And I'm saying like extremely. She's a single target unit, similar to Dr. Ratio, meaning she deals high damage single hits. And those hits need to crit. Otherwise, you lose out on a lot of damage. Now, I know her ultimate has multiple hits, but unlike Acton, where even against a single enemy, she deals a lot of separate hits with various multipliers. So even if one of those ends up not quitting, she doesn't lose that much damage. But Fascia already is pretty behind on overall damage output. And on top of that, if she misses a crit, well, let's say you won't really have fun playing her. To remedy this, you can just stack a lot of crit rate on her, something like over 85%, similar to her ratio. But then again, she doesn't have the extra crit buffing passive like him. Now her signature light cone or the Hurtasso light cone does help with that, but still, she's going to be a stat heavy unit to build. And speaking of light cones, now in my previous video, I calculated the damage difference between her signature and the Hurtasso light cone. And it turned out the damage difference is not that much, which made the Herta Soul Light Cone a great alternative for her. But there are certain situations where that isn't the case. Like her signature Light Cone gives a huge defense shred on her ultimate hits, increasing her damage by a lot. But the Herta Soul Light Cone catches up to that by giving a huge attack buff. And still to this day, a lot of players still underestimate how crazy a simple attack buff can be. Since attack is a base multiplier, it can have a drastic effect on the resulting damage. And that's why the Herta Soul Light Cone was able to catch up with her signature. But that attack buff is not always active. There are conditions to it. Also, if you pair her with an attack buffer like Robin, she will already have so much attack that giving a huge attack buff from the Light Cone will show diminishing returns, which makes her signature a pretty necessary investment if you want to see decent damage out of her. And I'm saying decent because even with a signature, she just can't beat units like Akron or Firefly or even boot him. And that seems to be the case even with premium supports. And speaking of which, here is the most concerning issue. She needs some premium supports to compete against current standards. Now I did say she has a lot of options for a sub DPS like Topaz, Hunt March who is completely free and Mose who can actually rival Topaz as a 4 star. But only 2 units doesn't make a full team. You need a support and a sustain as well. And that's where the issue is. There are 2 units that she desperately wants. First Robin and the second Aventurine. Now for both, finding alternatives can be difficult because you're not only looking for a support and a sustain that can do their respective jobs, you're looking for units who can also attack the enemy constantly so that your Fei Xiao can get her ultimate stacks. So for the harmony slot, units like Sparkle is a no-go. First, she barely uses her basic attack and secondly, follow-up attack teams don't really struggle with skill points. Ruanmei can be a decent alternative to Robin as she does use her basic attack but currently, Ruanmei is highly popular in another team 
the break team. And if you have a Ruan Mei, you'll probably have break units as well. And I'll highly recommend using her with them instead. Also, if you're one of those who constantly lose their 50-50 to Bronya and has her E4, then she can also be a decent option with her follow-up attacks. And for that, I'll recommend using a fast Bronya with over 160 speed, so that she can use a skill basic skill basic rotation, making her SP neutral and giving a ton of stacks to face out. And finally, if you're looking into 4-star options, well, at that point, you shouldn't even pull for Fascia, as you'll surely be disappointed by her damage output. Now, for her sustain slot, Aventurine is the only one that can work this well with her. No one else comes even close. Not only he has insane utility with his infinite shield and damage buffs, but he is one of the most frequent follow-up attack units in the game, giving a ton of stacks to face out. And well, if you switch that, it will feel similar to an E0 Akron without her signature light cone. It will take significantly longer for face out to get her ultimate back, resulting in some huge damage loss. And you will literally feel the difference, especially if you have played any of these three units before. And playing face out without a proper team after that won't be fun at all. Now, I may sound quite harsh towards her, but trust me, design-wise, she is one of my favorite units in all of HSR probably my favorite and it really pains me to see her in this state by the way if you're enjoying the content please consider subscribing as it does help this small channel grow and motivates me to make more content for you guys now let's talk about the other unit that's coming after Fascia, Lingsha, the 5 star Gallagher, but not so much better than Gallagher. Let's dive more into this. In a nutshell, Lingsha is a fire abundance unit focused more towards break teams. She has a unique companion with their respective own speed, similar to something like Numbi with Topaz. This companion can be summoned through her skill and deals damage to all enemies when taking action, while healing and cleansing the entire team. This companion has 5 attack counts and each time it takes action, the count gets reduced by 1. Also, whenever any of her allies HP drops below 60%, her companion instantly takes action, dealing damage, healing and cleansing all at the same time. Finally, her ultimate inflicts a 25% break damage taken debuff on the enemy. And this is the only form of damage increased utility in her kit, which is kind of a shame. Her kit overall is not so much of an upgrade from Gallagher. She is supposed to be a healer for break teams, but she doesn't have any break effect buff or any break efficiency buff either. The only thing that she provides as a supportive utility is a 25% break vulnerability. And this makes you ask the question if you should pull for her or not. Well, for that, let's have a quick comparison between both Lingsha and Gallagher. First, we take each part of Lingsha's kit and then counter it with Gallagher. So first, and maybe the only thing that kinda makes her worth pulling is a 25% break damage taken debuff, which lasts for 2 turns. And at E0, with 110 energy cost, she can't always guarantee a 2 turn ultimate. That means, she can have some downtime. For Gallagher, he also has a break damage taken vulnerability which is without a debuff, but his only gives 12%, which is well worse than Lingsha, but as a 4 star, we can get his eidolons much easier. And at E4, this debuff gets his duration increased by 1 turn, making it 3 turns, and giving it 100% uptime. Next, we have her defensive utility. She can heal and cleanse all her allies with her companion. And she also has an emergency heal, similar to Luocha. In case of Gallagher, he also has a team-wide heal with her enhanced basic attack, which is quite frequent, and he has his debuff, which makes any of his allies heal themselves when attacking a target with said debuff on them. As for a cleanse, well, he does get a cleanse at his E2, but given he rarely needs to use his skill, it doesn't make much of a difference, and a single target. But regardless, he does have one. Next, her damage. Given you build her with ample amount of break effect, with her AoE follow-up attacks with her companion, she can dish out some awesome numbers. As for Gallagher, he also can do the same with both his enhanced basic attack and his AoE ultimate. So much so that he can sometimes work as a break DPS in some pure fiction teams. But Lingsha might still have more damage output, as all her follow-up attacks and her ultimate are AoE attacks. All of this kinda makes Gallagher more or less a worst version of Lingsha. He has less damage amplification, less sustained capabilities, and less overall damage. But there is still one more thing that Gallagher offers, and that is skill point generation. Currently, Gallagher is the best SP generator amongst all the sustains, beating even Luocha and Aventurine. And if you have a well-built Gallagher like mine here, with close to 160 speed and the multiplication light cone, then it literally becomes a god in generating skill points. But can Lingsha do the same? Well, she does most of her heal and damage through her companion, so she can just use her basics to generate skill points, but she still needs to use her skill to summon her companion, and also need to get her ultimate back in time. Otherwise, you lose out on her damage taken debuff. Also, you may think to build her like Gallagher, with high speed and multiplication, but she is going to be needing a lot more break effect stat than Gallagher, making it so that using a break effect focused light cone like this one here is more helpful than multiplication. Gallagher doesn't face such issues because as a 4 star, and given how many times he has been given for free and has appeared on banners, most of you guys have already have him at higher eidolons. And if you have him at E6, well then he becomes just as good as Lingsha at dealing damage, and maybe better in breaking enemies with his weakness break efficiency buff. 
Lingxia right now does have more sustain and damage amplification than Galaga, but he has close to the same amount of damage and more SP generation than her. And that's super helpful for players with an E05 fly, as she eats up skill points super fast. And I didn't mention this earlier, but her signature light tone gives 18% extra big damage taken on the enemies. So let's say you have a well invested Galaga, then instead of pulling for Lingxia, just pull her light tone and put it on Galaga, and he will literally be on par with Lingxia. Personally, I like the fast action Galaga with the multiplication light tone, but if you want the best from your Jades, then getting a light tone can be better than getting her at E0. And E0 Lingxia may be a bit better than Galaga, but that difference gets less and less with every bit of investment you put in on your Galaga. And at E6, he can perform better than her in certain situations. Now if you consider Eye Launch, then she becomes a lot better, like with the weakness break efficiency buff and the defense down from her E1. This is something I would have preferred to have in her base kit, and that would then justify her being an upgrade from Galaga. But as the way she is right now, she is not a 5 star material in my eyes. Alright, so now that we've discussed both their values very briefly, who should you pull for? Frankly, neither. Just take your Jace and pull for Zhao Shou, and skip both Fei Xiao and Ling Xia. I'm not joking. In terms of overall account value, Zhao Shou holds way more value to any account than either of these two units. He's a universal damage amplifier and can be slotted into any team. Actually, he can also work with Fei Xiao as a support, or he can be used in place of a sustain in a no sustain break team, and he will provide more damage increase than Ling Xia. So if you are comparing these three, then I recommend Zhao Shou a hundred times. As for these two units, if you are an early to mid game player and you have both Robin and Aventurine, nope, not one, both of them, only then I recommend pulling for her, because at that point, you won't have insane gear pieces, and only through awesome suppose that you can achieve decent damage on Fei Xiao. And also, at that point, I would recommend damage dealers like Akron or Firefly or Boothill more so than Fei Xiao. And if you are a late game player, then I say if you have either Robin or Aventurine, then you should pull for Fei Xiao. And this is because as a late game player, you already have high quality gear, and maybe some awesome 5 star light wounds, and a lot of other supports to use as an alternative to either Robin or Aventurine. In Ling Xia's case, personally, I absolutely do not recommend a specific team focused healer to an early to mid game player. She only buffs break damage and has nothing to offer to other teams. And she can be pretty hard to build, which may be a problem for new players. As for veterans, well if you really like this unit, and for god knows whatever reason you don't have a Galaga build in your account, then you may pull for her. But trust me, she as an easier unit, at least in my opinion, not so much of an upgrade from Galaga worth spending jades on. Now I did say a video comparing Fei Xiao and Ling Xia, but these two units have nothing to be compared for. One is follow up focused, and another is break. If you like one of these teams, and check all the criteria I just mentioned for each of these two units, then go for it. But from a meta and overall account value perspective, these two units are absolutely not worth it in my opinion. And that's all I have for this video. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. If you want more in-depth knowledge on either of these two units, wait for my full build guide on them. Like and sub if you found this helpful. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.